So today, um, like I had said, we are going to start learning about and talking about, really, I should say, about what it means to kind of take your learning into your own hands and to craft your own learning experience. So before we kind of go into what that's going to look like today, what I would like you to do is brainstorm on your tables for a second. But I want you to just individually think for a second, how do you know that you have learned something? Ooh. I'm starting to see some common trends and common language that you're using to explain how you think you've learned something. So if I can just hear a few voices and maybe we can pop some of those trends out. Helen? I know I've learned something when I can teach it to somebody and I feel calm doing it. Okay, so when you can teach it to somebody and you feel calm doing it. I love that, right? So there's no angst about it. You feel comfortable. You feel strong in what it is that you're doing. Perfect. Thank you. Helen? Um, I can explain the topic to other people. You can, okay. And connect it to my life. Connect it to your life. Ooh, I like that. So relevancy, right? Thurston? I'm also engaged when I'm, when I'm, when I'm in the conversation when I apply my own learning from like learning about this topic or this skill in another class or thing I learned about it. So you're, you're able to draw from other areas and other aspects of knowledge that you have and be able to put that into what it is you're talking about? Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Thurston. So I want you to leave those ways that you know how to identify learning on your table so that as we're going through this exercise, you are then able to figure out what you think the success criteria should be for this learning intention today. So as you work as a group, you're going to then open that up and explain to me why you think they meet expectations, why you think that article exceeds expectations, or why you think it needs a little bit of revising. First off, like even when you look at it, it's much longer, so you can tell it's it's it has a bit more information than this one is. <laughs> it has amazing grammar and it's like sources. Amazing grammar, professional. Many sources, like Ms. Griffin's assignment. Sources are cited. What do you say? Oh, okay. The clarity is there. So you know exactly what they're talking about. They also like answer what the entire um, essay or paper is going to be about by telling us like what they're actually going to report on. They don't just immediately like jump into it. Uh -huh. They actually use like really good grammar and punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that in this one by reading it you, if I wouldn't have told you what the assignment was, you would be able to know what the assignment is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So do you think this one meets or exceeds? Which one? I, we said, yeah, it would meet our expectations because I just remembered like what you told us like you were grading on. Yeah. But I don't know like some teachers, like, some teachers might Go off like, of me. Oh, you? Yeah. yeah, yeah in this class. Me? Think me yeah. Perfect. Okay. Good job. Wait, what kind of format is this? It's not like it should be all. an AP format, but it's not, right? And this <clears throat> The spacing is off, right? What else? Grammar is off. Right, so do you have all these things labeled somewhere? Because those are great points you're finding. So grammar, you said, spacing. And then what else? Is there anything else missing? Okay. And you might want to compare it, so when you, when you find out that one needs revising, you might want to compare it to one that you think needs expectations so that you can see what else this one might be missing. Right? What you have on your tables right now is an example of different types of success criteria that should be included in an assignment that looks like this, right? I'm gonna go around from table to table and I'm gonna ask you for some of your examples. Um, for number two, we agreed that it exceeded expectations because it had transitional words. It quoted from sites and it had great grammar and language. Thank you. Group three. Like it's not in paragraph form, Okay. It, it barely answers the questions and, and um, it needs capitalization, punctuation, and it needs to be written in complete sentences. It could have been broken into more paragraphs. Thank you. Group four. There's not a lot of like reasoning like for like, what they're saying. Okay. And then for example one, she said it needs expectations. It's really clear. Um, it's thorough and it's organized, but again, it lacks voice. Thank you guys. Now that we have those common themes of what we want the success criteria to look like, we're gonna decide what the main three are. Could be all of them, could be one, could be two. Number three. Uh, to me, it's probably proper grammar. 
because it's just important to have it because without yeah. proper grammar, you uh, people won't be able to understand you. If you turned in a paper that has great proper grammar, but it doesn't have your citations included and is not in MLA format, if that's what was asked of you, is it at the college level? No. no. Andrew? I believe two, three, and four should be included because two and three, if you can get those down, will create number one. Okay. And then number four can either make or break your paper and whether or not it's actually college format or not. Does everything you turn in in every class have to be in paragraph form? No. no. Should everything be in proper, proper grammar? Yeah. Should it all have a flow and strong transition? Yeah. Should any source you use be cited? Yes. Yeah. Do those show the way to learn how to write at collegiate level? Yes. Yeah. Does the wording of this look like normal success criteria that you've seen? No. no. no, right? What is typical success criteria? How is it written? I can statement. Okay, so we've seen I can statement. We can choose to write them as we can statements, or you can choose to write them in rubric format. What do you guys think is the easiest? Use proper grammar? Uh, yeah. Okay, what about this one? I can apply. apply. I love that word. Direct flow. Does this make sense? That doesn't make sense, right? I can practice using. Ooh, I can practice using with strong, strong transitions, does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, and what about citations? I can what? You can say, I can include citations and mm -hmm. I can include citations. So I can include citations and? A proper format in. Apply them? Yeah. Do you think if you were able to follow these, you would know that you have met the learning intention for the day yes. of writing at a collegiate level. Yes. Very good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Very good. <laughs>